All right, all right. Good to see you, uh, Vampire. How you doing? Good. Can't We're can't talking be talking about uh, Billy Blanks tonight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. and on the dragon. And, both of and the dragon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but but two different movies. We're talking yes. about Future Kick and TC Two Thousand. Uh, TC2000 was just released um, not too long ago from Vinegar uh, Syndrome, where they made it into a Blu-ray release. Okay, I wonder if, like, are they the same guys that uh, produced the movie or made the movie back in the day, or, or no, is this something think... new? You mentioned it last time, but I was trying to look at who produced it, and there was something with, like, Syndrome or something. I don't know, maybe I'm... I watched it a few days ago, so I didn't get all the details. Yeah. But either way, watching it on Blu-ray would be awesome. I watched it just on the web. Right, right. And and uh, both of these movies are, I believe, 90s, early. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so back in the day, martial arts action flick. But Dude. they're both sci-fi. Dude, they're awesome, man. <laughs> like, I, I think that um, Steven Seagal could get some tips from these guys, man. He should have back then. <laughs> um right just jumping right in tc2000 uh i like that bolo's in it and he's a good guy oh man yeah i think he's a good guy yeah he oh, is no, a good oh, guy sure. so bolo yeah. in, bolo of course steals the show right yeah like you said this time he's a good guy what'd you think of him as a good guy because normally he's such an awesome amazing bad guy <clears throat> leaveable as a good guy oh totally yeah and uh he even does tai chi like that's what I liked in this movie because I remember like back in the day learning about Bolo obviously from Bloodsport and um, <clears throat> he was even back in the Enter the Dragon we mentioned that but like Bolo was always into more of the Tai Chi stuff from what I remember learning about him back then I'm sure anyone can look him up now but back in the 90s when you looked somebody up you couldn't necessarily do it on the internet you had to either read about them in a magazine or hear about them in an interview and that's what i remember from bolo in this movie they showcase some of that tai chi in fiction and i like the scene there's like a isn't there a scene where he fights matthias hughes at the end like yes is, is that this movie yeah where he gives him like a chi blast through the door right exactly exactly yeah. i'm so uh, what, what you're you're talking about is that Bolo um, in real life. The yes. Actor, yes. Even though the way he looks. Oh, I mean, he's ripped. Sorry. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. A, like a massive bodybuilder, scary looking dude. But in real life, the actor actually likes Tai Chi, right? Yeah, he's I, like I gifted in, in the internal arts, the martial arts of Tai Chi. And yeah, so I guess the movie was trying to cover some of that and maybe, maybe it just coincided. Like, I don't know if they did it on purpose or not, but it was a great, great character role for him to yeah. see him as a good guy, to see him doing the Tai Chi and, and, uh, it just seemed cool. Like I liked also that we've talked about it before the underworld overworld aspect. Mm. This movie has it. And Future Kick, which we're going to talk about side by side, it yeah. uh, it also has that in in terms of how they come from the moon, the different and, worlds, yeah, yeah, and then they come to Earth, yeah. Um, which, uh, but I'm happy to stick to TC2000. Yeah, which we're we're on it. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do TC2000. So he fights yeah. uh, Matthias Hughes at the end, but he's not the main character. Surprisingly, it's Billy Blanks. Billy Blanks. And Billy Blanks has. Uh, oh, there's a whole list of characters. Even um, Jalal uh, oh, Mary comes out. I mean, he's so awesome. He's got a painted face. He's the Picasso clan. Uh, let's see. Nick, so Nick what's... Picasso is his name, right? Yeah, Nick yeah. Nick Picasso. Or, right? Yeah, and the, the leader of the... Nicky Picasso is the leader of the... Uh, what is he? They're like a... They're not underground. They're overground. Yeah, they're the overground, but they're like... Just foot soldiers for yeah. some higher group. There's somebody orchestrating something. Because remember, he's got that right. that flip uh, mm -hmm. device, the little computer, handheld computer. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, like this was filmed in the 90s. 
but the future tech and everything that they have, it's like it's like right on. Like if you look at it, it's just not you know touch screen like what we have now. But they weren't so uh, out of out of touch with what they were doing with the tech that they had at the time, and then the fiction of how they were taking it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, but I like that. Like he's working with somebody. He's working with someone from the inside. Like we don't know yet at the beginning yeah. of the movie. Right. We just know that they're always like a step ahead and uh, they've been harassing the, the trackers. That's what TC stands for. Tracker communicator, I think. And uh, they're, yeah. they're like a, a, they're a unit from within this underground world where they go up and they police and make sure that, that things are safe because eventually the underground people, I think they want to come back up. I'm not sure. Are they content down there? It's so the, weird. The, They're like a cult. The, the, the normal outside world is supposed to be like radioactive. Damaged. And, yeah, and, the ozone layer. Yeah, right? Yeah. And so the rich people went underground. Yes. And uh, they hired this patrol group, and those yeah, are yeah the TCs, right? Mm -hmm. And there's gangs and stuff that like invade, and they they were like trying to get underground. They're trying to come yeah. in, and the TC people stop that, right? That's their that's their job. Are so the TCs uh, cyborgs? Are we? Um, are they modified at all by like? Do they have a chip in the brain? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, remember when Billy Blanks was like. I, I don't want any part of this anymore, right? Yes. The guy was like, go get your uh, surgery done. Yes, yes, that's right. They were yeah. going to mind wipe him. So they had okay. to remove stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's small, you know, I implants. Implants, yeah. So they're they're still, they retain their humanness, but they're a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay, so he's got a partner. We got to talk about her. Yeah. The I think she's sort of like the main attraction of the movie because <laughs> they end up, uh, turning her into the TC 2000 X, right. which is a full, almost full on cyborg with a lot more modification parts. Right. And she's controllable. They, they program her. Remember there's that weird college kid doctor guy that. Yeah. 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 He <clears throat> has, he's got a whole other agenda. Yeah. He's yeah. He's kind of weird and pervy. Yeah. 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 But, so she, she's pretty much, she dies, comes back as a, pretty much almost like an android, right? Yeah, they bring her back completely as a cyborg uh, and uh, her personality, all that stuff of her previous human life, that's over. It's, but when they bring her back, yeah. something happens in the, in the process. Oh, you know what it is? I think it's when they take all those photographs of her, when they, when they bring her to the to the press conference yeah. and the photographing. Cause remember the overlord and the doctor perv, they're talking to each other in the, in the control room. And he's yeah. like, no one's ever going to be able to access those memories. That's what the doctor assures yeah. the overlord. Yeah. And he's like, are you sure? And he's like, mm, yeah, no one. But when all those flashes go on, I think those flashes do something to her, her mm -hmm. memory. Yeah. And it sort of shows her glitching. Yeah, and uh, she fixes it, but later that glitch comes back when she's fighting Billy Blanks's character. Yeah, because they, they were sort of like boyfriend and girlfriend. I I don't know how I I, I wouldn't say boyfriend girlfriend, but they were close. Yeah, yeah. they were pretty close for yeah. workers. Like she would go over to his house and yeah, and chill out after work. Like yeah, oh, yeah. but they were partners for ten years, and that by itself. Yeah. Gives you a great relationship because you're putting your life on the line in this fictional world, the TC. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, so they're always tight with each other. So yeah. when she died, it was a big deal for him. That's right. A great loss. I mean, he wanders into that. He goes up into the up world. Yeah. Yeah, he goes up there and uh, that's... Is that where he, he encounters Bolo, right? Yes, but not yeah. immediately. Not immediately, he, yeah. He, he goes up there and he meets some people and kind of discovers that there is a world up there. And uh, right. remember... That it's not just hostels, that there's actually people like trying to survive. Yeah. 
Yeah, like yeah. normal people trying to just live normal. Like, but they yeah. just look like homeless people, right? Yeah. But, yeah. Somehow, though, he does eventually meet up with Bolo. Well, re remember, they come after him because they, this is after they try to, first of all, when they remove all the implants on, on him, the guy was like, why didn't you kill him? Right, the overlord guy, he says, yeah. the guy, and he was like, Well, that's gonna be all on me, I don't want to take that responsibility. And then he's like, Okay, and he sends uh Matthias Hughes and his cronies after him. Yes, he has to escape the underground, and then that's how he ends up in the in the overworld. And that's yeah. actually some cool fight scenes, like in the tunnels and stuff. Yes, and those tunnels are so cool. Like, I love the practical aspect because. You know they're really in some underground somewhere in Hollywood, who knows oh, where. Yeah. But oh, they're yeah. using that, and I totally believe it. I buy it, that they're yeah. in like a wasteland underground yeah. in a sewer system. And it's kind of like that other movie where we saw how they they go from like one end of, of the city, and then they end up in another part and through the underground. Ring of Fire too. Yeah, it just <laughs> yeah. goes on and on and on for for miles and miles that underground pipes world. and stuff. Yeah, 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 all the pipes and everything. Now the Billy Blanks, you got to give him a lot of credit for the fight scenes that he he does there in yeah. a, a confined space. And he, yeah, he's a pretty big dude. He's doing you know spinning jump kick aerial spinning jump kicks and mm -hmm. stuff. I mean. Yeah, you, you could you could tell that that I think that'd be really hard to do. To oh, for sure, he's really fight. athletic too. Like yeah, I, he's super athletic. I love his movies. There, the thing about these movies that I like uh, is that they have a start to finish. You know, we're not going to see TC two thousand part two or part three or part four, um, <laughs> and with the exception of Tiger Claws and some of these other movies. The, that start to finish aspect is a great, great part of the movie. Mm. You can watch it and then it has rewatchability. The second thing I like about it is that they do have sort of a moral lesson mm. that they're teaching. Um, unlike some of those other uh, adult themed martial arts movies, like with my you know favorite guy here, Seagal, he, there's not much moral lesson going on there with, uh above the law there was but as you get on into the older newer ones no so right. this movie it has that it's got the plus it's got just great entertainment man i love cyborg the john claude movie so oh. this one just sort of tops it for me in another level of cyborg yeah because it's the wow. wasteland the and it's a believable wasteland just cyborg was a believable wasteland but this one kind of like it, it feels even better because wow. the people like it. I like it. Like, you know, I, I don't know. Um, maybe it's the combination of the moral lesson. What was the moral lesson for Cyborg? For Cyborg? Yeah. So I think I think that's what it is. Like, it's the combination of that. It's got a good moral lesson. There's mm -hmm. a start and finish. Cyborg mm -hmm. had a part two. And I think there was even a part three that went straight yeah. to video. Yeah. Um, and so that already kind of puts it on a lower tier, mm. even though it was a, a higher star. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I like this movie. TC 2000. It's good. The partnership. She overrides. Remember, she's fighting with with Billy Blanks and in her yeah. brain. It's like override. It says override. Yeah. She sort of gives him a chance, but then she goes back and fights again. And yes, so it's pretty good. Like the good overcomes evil in this movie. In a way, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's like, what I mean. Like, there's a moral there. In the end, when uh, the Overlord guy is trying to, uh, you find out that the outside world is livable, that the Earth yes. like, heals itself. And yeah. this guy, he's doing the conspiracy where he's trying to destroy that. Yeah. Right. So it's sending like the missiles, the rockets out. And he's trying to keep it messed up so that the and, and he was working with Nick, Nicky, uh, um, Picasso. that's right, Picasso. And that's where that scene where the girl before she's TC 2000 X, she's still the partner. The she says, Hey, they've got more information than us, they know about this corridor that we don't even know about. And right. that's where they discover the handheld unit, yes, and how they had a TC code. 
that that code had to have come from somebody that was uh, high higher ranked than they. Because that that area basically takes them to where this girl Zoe, her dad was a scientist. That's and, right, and so Zoe's locket is yeah. the key. In into this area, which I guess it it could do two things: it could help heal the earth, or it could destroy the yeah top right. It like maybe it could do either or or something. Yeah, like, I think right? so. And she turned. Um, she ends up doing fulfilling her destiny, mm -hmm. turning good. Yeah, but yeah, that that her dad was a scientist, and he built that that lock into the thing and she didn't really know much about her dad except that she had that thing yeah um and luckily for us and for the movie for the sake of the plot her yeah. brainwashing doesn't really work they don't and she ends up remembering yeah but it's it's bolo that saves the day yes and, yeah where he he uh types in the password yes because he types in zoe in like another language life uh, yes like yes. like uh zoe is latin greek 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 yes yes for life and then plus like they're like how did you know and he's like he told me the dad oh that's right yeah we learn right at that moment that bolo yeah. was friends with the dad but but even before that like remember um matthias knew who he was yes and he was like, you used to be a great warrior you're now you're nothing remember yeah yeah because uh, I think I talked about it in another one of our videos. That fight scene, uh, he's all like tough. Matthias is real tough and they're fighting and he's egging him on. But then he runs mm. and Bolo like bangs on the door. He's like, hey, let me out. Because yeah. the overlord has already armed the sequence for the self-destruct. Right. And if they don't get out of there, it's, it's going to self-destruct. Um, I think that's when they were trying to make the rise out of the tunnels into the into the overworld, into the chamber where they they're blasting stuff. But yeah, yes. so uh, and and that's where Bolo, of course, uses the the cheese shot. Oh, that's so awesome! I I but if you if you look at that fight, it's a good fight. I'm oh, going it's to, totally an awesome fight. Yeah. yeah, it's it's not that. Um, they were pretty neck and neck. It, it, yeah. Like Bolo wasn't wiping the floor with a guy or anything. No, no. And then it's also like a good fight where it takes place because of the environment. Like, I think they're on that walkway thing with some, some, uh, like it's, it, there's a little bit of confinement. I don't know if it's a walkway, but there's some confinement there. They're not in a big open space. Okay. I, I thought. Those two had a pretty good. Billy Blanks was, I think, more confined. I think. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's, oh, you're right. It's only when Matthias runs through the door that there's the confinement. Yeah. But they do have a pretty open fight. Yeah. Yeah. And and man, they they were like I said, pretty neck and neck until like I think at that point, neck yeah. and neck, and then Matthias must have been his character must have been like, okay, I'm done. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's Matthias. sort of like a bad guy, like yeah. and uh selfish sure. bad guy so For he sure. has to make the the quick getaway and, and <laughs> think of of himself yeah but yeah. Oh, that that was that was crazy awesome um and what, what was also interesting in this was when they're trying to show scenes of the top world how it was like post-apocalyptic we see bolo doing like these underground fights he's like a champion yes yeah, almost like not Mad Max style, but like in, yes. yeah, like and they're betting for like water. Yes. Yeah. The, and like that's how uh, that's how he meets um, Billy Blanks. In fact. Yeah, yeah, cause Billy helps him out, cause the one of the guys get mad and takes out a knife and he yeah. cheats at the end. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Bolo gives him the water as an offering. Like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, do you think Bolo's character was a TC or like a pre-TC before, before, you know? And that's a good question. He could be, or he could have been like a regular cop or something like and an that's overworld why cop. Matthias knew him and that's why he knew Zoe's dad and stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then Billy Blanks must have been like more like second, third generation. Second or third. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, I wonder if Bolo had had any implants or anything. I doubt it. 
He was probably just natural. Maybe um, it it was older than that. So yep, it was yeah. a lot older because yeah. Sometimes they don't give backstories in these movies, but like a typical story arc would be 10, 20, maybe even 30 years. Mm -hmm. Like, cause how old was Zoe? She was, she looked like she was in her twenties, mid twenties, could have been younger than 30. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, no. Yeah. They, they were definitely not, I did not rookies for sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Bolo had a history with the dad. Right. And at the end, the way he kind of like, the way he makes it, like he could be like Uncle Bolo. Like he, right. so he right. definitely could have been like even playing with the little girl when she was little. Like, you Maybe. know, yeah. being yeah. such good friends with the dad. Because totally. I think there's a scene, like I want to say, is there like a scene where Bolo's with like some, like there's animals that are alive and like the animals like him or... Or am I am I getting confused with him in another movie, The Fearless Tiger? I think that's another movie because in this one he had like a daughter or some some. Okay, yeah, got it. Remember, and she was trying to explain to Billy Blanks, you know, who Nikki Picasso was and stuff, and yeah, yes, yes, yeah. and which and Nikki, Nikki and his crew were bad dudes. They, 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 a lot of this is almost like straight out of Fist of the North Star. Do you get that vibe? Oh, man, I could see that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like some of the writers, like they're influenced by it. Yeah. And then who did the music? Is it that same guy, uh, Varouge or Varouge, I think is the name of the music composer? I've seen him in a lot of these uh, Jalal Mer Mary movies and right. and even some of these other, um, the with Don, the Ring of Fire and stuff. I don't know if he did Ring of Fire, but I've seen his name. V-A-R-O-U-J-E. Varouge. This one wasn't bad at all. The yeah. the music. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty good. good. Right, right. Pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah, overall, man, this movie was great. It just had a lot of the the good elements. Plus, Billy Blanks is such a good actor. Like, he's real believable. It is, it, yeah, to me, this is one of his best, um, more entertaining ones. Uh, and... So we got to talk about like Bolo using the chi, right? Where yeah. He does the the shot. I remember that part where he grabs the kid's hand. Yes, he does the chi kick. Yeah. Okay. So there yeah. you go. So I he, that tells you that he could use the chi more than just one way. Yeah, he's they're foreshadowing. They're giving us the the little glimpse that he's gonna use it in the future mm. for sure with that scene. Mm. Um. It takes you got to watch it a, a couple of times to, to see what's going on there. But when he grabs the child's hand and, and does that kick, yeah, it is sort of like a straight out of a cartoon or something, yeah, you know, yeah, like a Dragon Ball, yep, yeah. Dragon Ball Z, something yeah. like that. But uh, now, should, should we go to future kick? I think so. Um, I mean, there's not much the this movie's a great story, it, it just it talks about let's see. Um, a guy who loses his partner and in the process of losing his partner also loses a bit of himself, then his whole worldview is shattered because he discovers that everything he had worked for was a lie mm -hmm. when, he just, when he goes up and sees for himself that the overworld is not damaged the ozone has sort of repaired itself and it's right. that basic storyline i don't know if i've got the details right but similar like to highlander 2 and and those other uh were the ozone layer so when he discovers this about himself and about the world it's a rebirth and then his partner comes back to life so it's a double rebirth yeah and he's got to now struggle all over again and start from zero and then achieve that high level uh, status he had worked for many years 10 years as a tc so he had like a retirement but all that was kind of over because they're trying to kill him so now he's got to start again and in this case since he lost a partner he lost all his company everything he worked for he gains now these underground people the the friendship of bolo and the reunification of the professor with his daughter Zoe 
and ends up saving the world. So yeah. it becomes a, a much better place. I'm, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's a great movie. The character development, dynamic character. Yeah. Everybody gets to change. We see that change in everyone. I think even almost like in Matthias at the very end when he gets the chi blast through the door. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's almost like he's talking to Bolo, like you say that they have a history with each other. Yeah, yeah. And their sure. their back their back and forth banter is real um, familiar. They have like a vibe. And and not just that, because Matthias' character also had a problem with Billy Blanks. Yep. And remember in the training, they have an awesome fight where they go at it and they're neck and. Yep. yep. Yeah. But like. In this movie, what, one of the things that kind of throws me off a little bit is that the rich people are underground. They're not. Yes. You, you I'm, I'm so used to seeing that the poor people are underground. Yeah. And like yeah. even when they showed like Bolo doing the, the fights and stuff, it kind of made me think that they were underground. But actually, it's not. They're, they're on the surface world. Mm-hmm. And so I'm wondering, like, in the underground world, because we don't really get to see it. Every, we just see, like, the headquarters, the base operations. Yeah. But where are the normal people living there? So is there, like, a mall and it just looks, like, normal? Can you imagine? Escalate? Yeah. It, it, I, I, I think I do see that in my head. Because right. remember, there's that great hall where the overlord is giving his speech. And, mm. and it looks like, like it could be, like, from any old normal college or or uh, uh yeah. university lecture hall okay and uh there's a scene there i think and but i would kind of envision them in pods like i think of like pod people living underground remember resident evil one yeah the first one where they're underground and you know, yeah. the window scene where yeah. you think there's an outside but it's really just a pretend window scene <laughs> they probably have that in the in this setup and and kind of like uh I'm I'm almost imagining, yeah, literally like an underground mall or something. Yeah, and, yeah. And like, remember when Billy Blanks is is running? He's he's um, because he lived like in an apartment, right? Yes. A, yeah. A tiny little apartment, like a right. pod apartment. So all those people working there they have probably, their own apartment. Yeah, and then Zoe probably has one like that. But then, like, the more richer normal people there, the citizens probably have a much nicer. Oh yeah, for like sure, that. totally, yeah. totally, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. and then, but they don't show it in this movie. No, they, yeah. So, so that's kind of the stuff that you kind of have to think about, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. a con. Like it, it could be. I, I would have liked to have seen a little more of that. Right. Like in uh, the movie Elysium, mm. we see that when they're living in that colony up there. Right. The, the, yes. Yeah. yeah, and you get to see the beautiful. Uh, big big buildings and the rich people's houses even yeah. when they land and see so we don't see any of that in in tc 2000 so let let's go to future kick yeah from here and that's a great like yeah because in future kick we do see a little bit of it we, but, a lot more a lot um, more there's an airplane like there's a lot more luxury yeah you could tell right away i know i'm jumping in but we'll backtrack <laughs> right away when Meg Foster's at that police station yeah. and she's pissed and she's giving them all that lip yeah, and they're like, hey, stand in line, lady. Like, you could tell right away she does a great job of portraying uh, a rich, out-of-touch right. person living in the on the outskirts of town in the really, really rich part of town where you have to take a helicopter to get there. Right. And, <laughs> But yeah. in this case, she's living on the moon. It's a but they're so yeah. out of touch that when they, they have a concept of what it's like at the police station, yeah. when she goes to the police station, it's not like that at all. No, she's uh, a fish out of water. Let's get into that. This is a yeah. great movie. So Future Kick. Um, yeah. I did not expect to see what I saw. At oh, that's awesome. That's I, I was like looking. I had to go look up like. Did Philip K. Dick write this movie? Oh. What in the world? What am I watching? T Total Recall Part Two. It's like Terminator slash Total Recall. Dude, it's so Philip K. Dick. It's it, awesome. Like the music is Terminator, obviously. Yeah. 
Obviously. I think again, it, I wonder if it's the same guy. Like, if you're by your computer and and you can do like a, a double, you know, two at the same time thing, you could look it up and see who did the music. Mm. But it's no, still I, great. Like that that music is awesome, yeah. man. Like, yeah. I I give it a good uh, thumbs up. The what what else do we have? It's just kind of like gritty, like raunchy, oh. like it's not a a high level big budget movie i think it's a lower budget but it, it for sure. clicks off all the boxes for me it's so perfect it's so right. i love it like there's nothing wrong with this movie it's almost like remember the batman part one the the michael keaton yeah how you don't recognize any buildings there's no contemporary architecture everything set pieces this yeah. is one of those movies. Everything's a set piece. Like, I don't recognize anything. No, but like we were saying, compared to TC2000, which TC2000 is great, but this one does a better job of showcasing the world. Yes. That you're in. Like, yeah. even the little things like that. Remember that game that they would play with, like, a mind thing with the laser that, that they'd have to, like... You know, but they're you're betting your life on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just yeah. little things like that. All oh man, the, the show. heart extractor. Like that guy was so scary. Yeah. Like just meeting that guy, and then once he took out that like weapon that yeah, you know, it had the knife here, the knife here, and then the knife there, the three pronged knife. That was that was scary, and and when he takes out the guy, like Meg Foster's husband. Yeah. You know, that's just, oh, and then the heartbreak where she finds out that he's on a date with his girlfriend. Yeah. And like, it just yeah. breaks her heart. That one scene where you feel that pain, like you yeah. feel like your heart is broken. Like, oh my goodness. Right. So she did a great job. But once again, just that dis disparity between the rich and the poor, mm -hmm. you feel it in this movie, like double. We, we, we got to explain what, what is it? So. The rich people are living in on the moon because yes. Earth is kind of like crappy. The same thing. Like it's a similar premise to the previous movie. TC either through radiation poisoning or something. War, the Earth has whatever. Yeah. lost its, its virtue. And yeah. people that live here on the Earth, they also have to struggle a lot more. I think they have to get new organs or right. certain body parts and things. Isn't the husband involved in some kind of job where he programs things? Uh, he he was doing like uh, fantasy vacation stuff, right? Like okay, so it's virtual yeah. reality. So yeah, this one's virtual, virtual reality. It's not the where they're selling body parts. No, that's not him. No. Okay. No, no. Okay. Yeah, that that's the police chief. <laughs> right? Yeah, the police yeah. chief is the one selling the body parts. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Which, but you don't know this at no, the beginning no. of the movie, but you sort of learn it little by little that the police yeah. chief is working with the main people that were the boss of Meg Foster's husband. Who, mm -hmm. He was a boss, but he wasn't even in on the real scam, which the police chief is the is the guy behind the the human trafficking right. trafficking of organs and things right 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 oh that guy was scary with this it it's kind of unusual like like what they did in this movie is if you notice you got that guy and then you have his bodyguard uh the pen guy what's his face sean penn's brother yes christopher Pr yes. chris penn right yes so because normally you think they would just put that into one character. Yeah, yeah. But, so but one here guy's they, the muscle. Yeah, they they actually divided it. So to me, that kind of sets the overtone for this movie is for a straight to video type of movie. Yeah. Really put in a lot of, a lot. You know they. Yeah. Let's backtrack a tiny yeah. bit with sure. Don's character. Yeah. Don's the main main star. Here's the main draw. Right. Don the Dragon plays a Siron or... Siron, yeah. Uh, okay, so they're like a cybernetic... Um, or Cyberon, right? Cyberon, yeah, there we go, Cyberon. So yeah. cybernetic uh, operative human, cybernetic human. 
yeah. play on words. But nevertheless, it's the same thing as TC, where we've got a chipped out guy, except he's the last of his kind. There's only one other yeah. um, operating uh, cyborg out there. But the thing that I loved about this movie, and the, I don't know if you know the people out there in YouTube will see the parallels, but the irony is it's so amazing. These guys, these cy cyberons, were created to police yeah, crime that's right. and uh, corruption. Yeah. And what ends up happening is that the government is uh, so the, corrupt working corporation. with corporations yeah, yeah. that the cyberons end up turning on the government because the government were the bad guys. Well, the, and the so they... they yeah, that built the Cyberons. They were the ones that were. They were the bad guys. Yeah, so they, they were... fulfill their program yeah. to the to the letter, and they don't do it wrongly. They right. do it correctly, but they end up pursuing their own their own creator. They're the the corporations that built them. Exactly. So yeah, that's the irony. And then so then the corporations hunted them down. And then Don in, in one scene explains that they it was a massive war. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like I mean, they went like flying out into outer space, and they were chased, and yeah, you know, it was like Jedi that. Order sixty six. You know, everybody was axed. Like right, right. You know, yeah, yeah. So some serious like that. That's another movie right there. Yeah, totally. Yeah, but I love it. They keep it again, uh, short and sweet. It's one movie. We get all these stories and all these different threads that could be by themselves one movie. So they're packing in a lot. And it does have Chris Penn. And this was right around the best of the best years. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like 91. What is Future Future Kick 94? No, no, no. I, I think it is like 90, 91. It, Ring of Fire 2 that we saw uh -huh. actually came later. So this came out 1990, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. We'll bring yeah. a fire one and maybe future kick. Okay, you're right. So it's early 90s, 90, 91. Yeah. So um, best of the best part one. Yeah. And part two were like late 80s, early 90s. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I remember seeing best of the best two at the movie theater, and that was, I think, 94 or 90. Okay, yeah. yeah. So okay. Chris yeah. Penn yeah. was yeah. still sort of in in okay shape um kind of sucks what would happen to him but what um, what happened to him he had a heart attack at, at age 40 oh no and died yes oh, um God. i was watching an interview with don the dragon just uh, the other day i may have emailed you about this interview and in in the interview he talks about how he had just he had Chris Penn had been writing this story since he in high school times. I think they knew each other from back then. Like they were friends from yeah, they're back. buddies. Yeah, they're buddies. Yeah. So he had been writing a story from high school times, and no one ever wanted to do the story. It was a, uh, was kind of it was a Vietnam story about a Vietnam vet from America that goes back to Vietnam, and it was the opposite. It doesn't do carnage. Doesn't do uh fighting or warfare just goes back and raises a family and and like just a normal life yeah which probably would be a great movie for today's time right but back then nobody wanted to see that people wanted to see the action but right. chris penn had this idea in his head so don the dragon they they were talking about something totally unrelated yeah and don had just got word from a guy like at a party or at some event Somehow the guy said, hey, um, you still got that Chris Penn movie? Yeah. Um, you know, I got the funding for that now. Like, we can do it. Awesome. And so Don calls Chris that night. Oh, he's like, no. hey, man, like, by the way, I got the funding for your movie. Like, yeah. it's on. Like, we're going to do it. And so I, that's the last time they ever talked. Like, the next day it was within hours. Vampire that's... was, like, within hours and Chris died. So yeah. I think, like all the excitement got him because he was probably near 300 pounds when he died. Oh, really? He had, yeah, he was up. extremely oh. overweight. 
Oh. And he was talking to Don, and that's what they were talking about on the phone. Like, hey, we're going to get back into shape for the movie. Yeah. Like, um, you know, I really want you to help me. And, yeah, we're going to get into shape. And the movie's on. I got the money and everything. And the hang up the phone, and that was it. Like, he... How tragic. Yeah, yeah really, really tragic. And, and you oh, can see man. it in the interview where Don talks about it. Like, he gets a little shaky, you know? But, that, man, I... He was awesome in the best of the best movies. <laughs> yeah, he was great. He was a great, uh, really natural. He was great. Um, comes off wonderful as a as a character. He could have done done uh, great. I loved him in the. I think it was Reservoir Dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's a uh, just a shame that he died. But it, anyway, that that's uh, he comes out. Yeah, you know, he's in, in this movie. He's in Future Kick. Yeah, yeah as yeah. The a bad guy. As the other uh, Cyberon, uh, yeah. like a secret Cyberon or something. He's the secret Cyberon because remember, somebody says like, uh, there's another one out yeah. there. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and that's him. And then him and Don have the the cool fight scenes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's really cool. Uh, yes. But yeah. Uh, this movie was like, uh, I may have missed part of it like not that fight scene but i watched it on youtube and it was significantly shorter than what's listed on imdb like youtube may have take cut out a couple uh few minutes like six seven eight nine minutes of the movie okay and uh but yeah. i wonder you know for maybe nudity or something i don't know what uh you you could watch it on tubi man Okay, I'll, I'll try yeah. to find it again on two. Yeah. But I saw the whole movie. Like, it was on there. Like, it, right, right. it was just a few minutes it was missing. Um, I, you know, like like you're saying, I guess, to develop the dirty atmosphere, like gritty. Yeah. So there's a lot of strip joint scenes. Yep, there are. And that's what that's what I think it cuts out. Because okay. you sort of see a scene and then you're like, hey, wait a minute. what? Why did the music just go weird? And then the, yeah. the, the thing. But it's like seamless the way they edit it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, so I think, like like what I said earlier, that this was made right, I think, at the same time as the first Ring of Fire. Yeah, 90, 91. I, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So you, you see Eric Lee in here, in this movie. In the very beginning, he's one of the guards trying to arrest Don. Yes. And then you also see Maria Ford in here as one of the strippers. You mentioned that, too. Yeah, you mentioned yeah. that. And I think... I, I was trying to look, but then I don't know if I saw or not because it could have been edited out from the YouTube video. It could have been. But I watched it on YouTube, so. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, no, they do a great job of, of showing this this world through the eyes of, like you're saying, uh, Meg Foster's character. Yeah, from Meg Foster's perspective. And even yeah. when she meets up with the other girl that, um, uh, who, it was her friend that I think was murdered. Mm-hmm. Was it her friend that was the girlfriend of the of the husband or yeah, I think yeah. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Because there's that one guy, that creepy homeless guy that, that saw it saw it all happen. Yeah. 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 The the guy that he made the mistake of asking the killer for he's like, usually you get paid a tip. To yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. He made a big old mistake saying Oh, that. he he did. He cost <laughs> him his life. Yeah. Oh man. But uh, uh, <laughs> the police chief was in on it. That's such a racket. Like that's a uh, maybe back then, I guess it was a golden ticket. If you could write a story like that, maybe there was a lot of corruption in the 50s, 60s or 70s. Who knows? You know, you. Um, yeah, you, you did a good like what you mentioned um, earlier about like how Meg Foster, like you could her coming from a rich world mm -hmm. into this and then trying to figure out her husband's, you know, death and all that. And yep. she's talking to the police and everything, and they're really no help. And the frustration she's going through, you know, like nobody yes. can help her. She can't get through. She can't talk to the right people. And she's she's just kind of like helpless in this weird world that she doesn't belong in. Yeah. And in comes Don. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. Which Don actually had a arrangement with her husband and that yes the bill the yeah. $50 bill which i love the currency like <laughs> they stick 
stick with paper currency in the future, <laughs> but the the I guess they're bigger numbers. On the yeah. Bills. Yeah, it, it. I don't know. It looked cool. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it just the whole story and stuff. It it works out for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost got also like uh, the Total Recall vibe too. I know oh. you mentioned Terminator and, but where she's got to go to that district of the the uh, red light district, <laughs> right, right, um, from her hotel. And so yeah. I thought that was kind of scary. Like she's all alone and she's walking, and she's from the up from the moon. So oh. they don't. Oh, and then there's lines. There's literal lines in this movie, like go back to the moon or where they like insult you like yeah yeah but no i mean that that's when she meets don and you're like yeah that's a great idea like have him ask your bodyguard like you the viewer mm -hmm. want that you know yeah yeah and he kind of starts to to do that they do you know he does end up helping her and uh yeah no for sure the absolute 100% total recall because of the whole virtual reality thing that of course the beginning yep. and also the end yeah which like until you watch all the way through to the end but yeah. like at some point where before she takes off the thing because when her husband leaves like i got to wondering am i watching her virtual reality experience did we just go into her head like are we watching what she's imagining or the program that she just uploaded so it's kind of got like that total recall vibe right there. It, yeah. Did what we just watch as a movie, did that really happen or was it in, in her head? And then we find out at the end. No, but yeah, no. In, in the beginning, um, I, I was going like, cause, cause I had seen this multiple times. So I was like, where does it start? Like her story, you know, her, her, uh, headset, like yeah. where, where, and they, they blend it into where you can't tell. You and can't tell because she no. puts on the headset. She says bye to her husband. She puts on the headset. Yeah. And then the next scene that we get is presumably one of two scenarios. The headset view and we're now inside her head. Right, right, or right. Or the real world that's happening yeah. in the real world. Where she takes it off and answers. And the, yeah, so. Yes. So that that's the, and the police call her like, hey, yeah. your husband's dead. Right. That no, you're right. That, that right there. That's the critical point. So yeah. yeah. At least with Total Recall, we get the sweat on the dude. All oh, right. That bead of sweat to know yeah. that he, him, and Sharon Stone and the the yeah. others, uh, Michael Ironsides. I think that's Michael Ironsides. If I'm yeah. Not mistaken. Michael Ironsides. Yeah. 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 Great actor. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, um. So, uh, what happens? at the end i'm a little hazy here um at the very end or no like how does how do they resolve things here with the the police chief and uh well the, 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 the police chief get killed yeah they they get killed by the the knife dude. The, the knife yeah. guy right yeah, yeah. yeah. so evil kind of defeats evil and then we're left with just the knife dude and the android of uh, the the cyber, the other cyber on the Chris Penn. Penn. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just left with those two. And then of course, you know, uh, they fought though, Don and, and Chris Penn and they had a pretty good fight, but then, you know, they, they split off and then they meet again for the final fight. And how does that one go? Like, how does the, where does it take place? Where does it take place? It, uh, I thought it was a dark alley. It's an alley, right? It's yeah, I thought it was a dark alley. Yeah, because uh, they, they, it, it happened so fast. I thought they grabbed uh, her, mm -hmm. Meg Foster. Meg, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and I thought they were like, you know, they were gonna finish her. Like, yeah, it happens almost abruptly. Um, and I don't know if he was like, uh, you've been asking questions about me or or something. Yeah, and. From there, Don just comes in and saves the day, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, because the let's see, it was the since he's working with the chief of police, that's why it's like you've been asking questions, right? That's like where the line is comes mm -hmm. from. 
Because she's trying to, she's investigating what happened with her husband. And, yeah. She, and she, that guy is the guy that traffics all the organs. Man, this movie was so ahead of its time. Like <laughs> 1991, and it was touching on all these subjects that right now people from now would love to make a movie like this. But now, now times. I, I kind of feel like, okay, so we're for Don the Dragon to make a movie like this, you know, ju just like Billy Blanks making TC2000 or, or being in TC2000. Yeah. Both of these, both movies are, I mean, it's like, hey, you're a martial arts action star. Let's, let's make a movie. To do sci-fi is very, yep. very ambitious. Yeah, yeah. Super ambitious, you know. Yeah. I mean, even like for Arnold doing Total Recall, that's not yeah. as normal. Or The yeah. Running Man, you well, know. We're dealing with a, a total different epoch. The the period of 1989 in 1990, 91, there wasn't sci-fi genre the way it is today. The explosion of of what we have today with every movie is about outer space or every yeah. movie has a, a extraterrestrial life form. There's always something in, in every modern movie or even the, the lone space traveler that's, that's on a quest. You've seen movies like that. Yeah. So back then these guys really branched out, man. Like, they really did. And yeah. um, you got to give them a lot of credit, the, yeah, a lot very. more credit than, than the typical A-list martial arts actor star that it was well, only going to do one type of movie. For one, if if I was a producer and, you know, they, they said to me, we want to do a sci-fi action or a sci-fi movie, r right away, I know the budget's going to be mm -hmm. much higher. So that, you know, once again, for them to, to do this on a straight-to-video kind of platform, it... You know, my hat goes out. You got to be creative. You got to be. Well, they know how to tell stories. I think yeah. that I want to say that Future Kick was produced by Roger Corman again. Uh, yeah, oh, like all the Dons, right? Or I think most... all of them. Most of them are uh, Corman's involved. Yeah. At least maybe twenty out of the thirty. Right. But either way, this there's something about filmmaking that I never took filmmaking classes, but. You don't need to take these classes to. You watch enough movies, you can tell that they knew what they're doing. They were doing back in the fifties, like with the movies, the Ten Commandments, or or mm. Ben Hur, those big budget mm. movies. So a guy like Roger Corman is coming off of that world of the fifties and sixties and great epic movies. So there's a formula for movie making. I think he captures that formula. He's able to to commercialize it and put it into print. And, and capitalize on it. A lot of these movies that Don made were successful, yeah. really successful. So right. he may not have had the, the, the large uh, uh, impact or presence like some of these A-list stars, but yeah. like I said in some of these other videos that we've done, we're still talking about them today. And, and yeah. I think that that charismatic presence, um, the off-screen off and on-screen presence it, it carries over well still today in this uh, um, current age. You can look up any Don the Dragon interview of yeah. today and you'll see how just a humble guy he is, a normal, ordinary mm. dude. Yeah, um, awesome, awesome. Yeah, okay. and I love this movie, Future Kick. I, I, I'm i probably going to try to look for it on Tubi, but okay. I did that YouTube version was just, like I said, a few minutes shorter, so okay. I don't know if I missed it was probably most of the strip scenes because <laughs> all the fight scenes that we talked about were there. The fight yeah. scene with Chris Penn, the the taking out the sheriff or, you know, not the sheriff, but the, the chief of police. Like, everything was there. All the gruesome. All, all the main. Yeah, the awesome. terror. that. Yeah. yeah. So th um, now I kind of thought that maybe they learned from this movie. And so when they did Ring of Fire 2, it was, it's not sci-fi, but it was like, hey, let's do, you know, another movie that's not your typical action flick. Let's go way out there. And, but with a more limited budget, let's, because I feel like with Future Kick, they probably spent a lot more than, 
They had to have. Yeah, because they had that um, airplane scene going to the moon and, oh, and just the, the set pieces. Everything is real dark. It looks like Blade Runner. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. they, they really did try to copy. Well, not copy is probably not the best word, but they wanted to pay homage to a lot of these sci-fi movies yeah. of the past. I, I remember a lot of scenes like, do you remember the part where Don... Um, He's trying to uh, find a, uh, his bounty, his next bounty. So he just goes into this place where, you know, that's where he gets money. And then because the person was, I think, still alive, they didn't get there. They were like dead. You get this much alive. Yes. You, know? you get like, yeah, less money like, alive. What? Yeah. He's like, whatever. And then he goes over and he's looking for his next bounty and she's trying to talk to him. You know, just all those are all like you're saying sets. Those are yeah. Yeah, and yeah, they did. That must have cost a lot of money, but they it pays off because those sets are well well made. You really feel like you're in this world. Like, yeah, I don't want to be trapped in that world. It's terrifying. Oh. It's a feeling I do feel from her perspective that that fish out of water mm -hmm. feeling. They capture it well in this. They movie. do. They do a good job. So. Yeah, uh, final verdict, um, TC2000 and Future Kick, uh, you recommend both, obviously, right? Oh, I definitely recommend both. And like I said, I may have surprised you, but TC2000, it, it is real good competition for that Cyborg 1. Um, oh, real good competition that, for that. Because that. we cool. talked about Cyborg back a while back, and that movie was just one of my most favorites. I love the, the, that the scenes, how the sun, the sun comes off in that movie. It almost has like a blue hue in the, mm. in the film. It just looks really, really good and dry. Yeah. But TC sort of had that, that look also. Okay. Um, you okay. know, in, in a darker way, because there's not a lot of sunlight scenes in TC. A lot yeah. of it is, is dark, dark scenes where they're either underground or in the nighttime. Right. Uh, I don't remember a lot of sunlight scenes. So in, in Cyborg, I know we're not comparing these, but yeah, but it is a good direct comparison. They they do have a, a lot of sunlight scenes. They do, yeah. yeah. And that's what I liked was that sunlight from Cyborg. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. But that's maybe that's where, where this one kind of is. It It's a little bit less, you know, but oh man, it's a great verdict. Two thumbs up for both of them for sure. Yeah, um, yeah, Future Kick just feels like such a Philip K. Dick. Novel. <laughs> I, like you're you're reading one of his, but I couldn't find any information about it. Whoever wrote the the story the had to have been yeah. influenced by for sure, definitely yeah. Terminator plus Total Recall, and then throw in some Blade Runner. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. and uh, we know that the James Cameron worked with. Roger Corman back in the 60s, I think. So, mm, okay. You know, even Martin Scorsese, like Roger Corman's a big time producer, but from back then. And, you know, obviously these names yeah. have gone on to bigger, bigger things. They're more famous now than he, but. But he knew, he knew them all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and more, more importantly, he knows the formula for how to make a great movie, mm -hmm. how to set up a scene and, so that when you're when you're shooting that scene, everything in that in that frame belongs in that frame, and everything in that frame is set up so that your eye isn't stressing out when you're seeing one object here, another object a few feet away, and another object even farther away, and they're all placed pur purposefully together so that all three objects will make a, a congruent image in your head. Right. That kind of stuff is what I say with the formula. And yeah. these guys have that formula. A lot of the newer movies today, they're using strange movie angles, a handheld camera. They're trying to go what is called, quote unquote, outside the box. The box is perfect. The box is developed from the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. That's how we get to the 80s. So I, I don't. They, like a lot of the new movies, the yeah. formula is good. Roger Corman is great. That's my verdict. Stick with, <laughs> stick with the old school. Yeah, stick with old school. Same here. Yeah. Same here. So anyway, th thanks again. 
Yeah, for sure, man. I loved it. The music, the oh, the action, <laughs> the stories. Yeah, start oh. to finish. You're not gonna see a sequel of these. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, highly, highly recommended. Thank you all for tuning in. Yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll yep. see you next time. All right, Vampire. Later. Say Rick is out.